this trip on the Emirates London cable car. And I'm going to get a gold one for myself. success, watched by more than 3 billion people globally, and huge efforts have gone into making sure the games leave a powerful legacy for future generations. For Peter, the London Olympics 2012 was one it's of the best very good pipes, of my life. So we'll if I could go back and do it again, I would do it a lot yeah. more. As soon as I stepped in there, the roar was just electrified, and the noise got louder and louder, just, all the hairs in my body just lifted up. I think my dad's shed a little bit of a tear, but he doesn't like to admit it. The support the British athletes got, the support every athlete got was just immense. Anyone and everyone involved loved it. They'll recollect that memory as one of the biggest days of their lives. And hopefully, I can share this memory and inspire the next generation of athletes coming through. Great view of East London. The Olympic Park is a catalyst for the regeneration of large parts of East London. Continues from the Olympic legacy, there are opportunities for people to take part in skills and training programs. It's a fantastic green space and a great place to come and explore. Beneath our flight path is the distinctive red light shape of Trinity Boy Wharf, where the Thames is joined by the Lee Valley River. Michael Faraday, one of the world's most important scientists, had a workshop at the wharf, and it's still home to creative thinkers and artists. We're at the Harper Generations Chain Store in Trinity Boy Wharf. Parkour is largely about relative challenge, so it's never about just doing the biggest job that anyone can, it's more about challenging myself. We've got this incredible facility to train at, and it's such a positive thing to have. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the space can do for the community. If you come from the East India Station to here, there's all kinds of incredible installations, a strange little piece of street art, which kind of ties in quite well to parkour. Yeah, there's all sorts of weird and wonderful people doing interesting things. I make the fish as a temporary measure. And then someone was asking about From time to time, let's stop the airlines to allow guests to board or alight. We will resume your flight We spent the last year taking rubbish air cranes and trying to make sustainable products. We made this rickshaw, which is obviously made from the fuselage. We're also making a dab radio using the main thrust control, which is very exciting. Trinity Boy Wharf feels like the last corner of old London. In a way, it feels like a little bit of industry coming back to what is historically a really industrial place. The Docklands area of London went into decline after the Second World War, but in the 1980s there was a major new development here, and the business district of Canary Wharf rose into the sky. It now contains many of the tallest buildings in the UK, and more than 100,000 people work in the district. The original idea of the yeah, the government had invited down a guy called Michael von Klemm, who was a banker, but was really looking for a site for a factory. And he looked around and he said, well, actually not a great site for a factory, but he knew that banking was changing and he was going to need massive trading floors for his bank. And that's where the idea came from. Canary Wharf allows London to have a modern face because so much of London that we love is preserved and we like it to stay preserved. Canary Wharf is the fastest growing and largest new business district in Europe. When it is completely built out, there will be about 25 million square feet of space. And in terms of the working population, there will be about 200,000 people. Crossrail, when it's fully operational, will bring a 
whole new working population to Canary Wharf. Lots and lots of exciting developments happened in the east side of London, and all linked by yeah, the Dublin Side Railway, by the Jubilee Line, by Crossrail, by like all the other transport infrastructure that links into that. The Docklands Line Railway trip through Canary Wharf has been listed as one of the ten great railway journeys of the world. It is one of the great regeneration projects of the last century. The River Thames has been the lifeblood of London since Roman times, and trading ships have plied its waters for centuries. As the size of ships increased, they needed powerful tugboats to guide them. Despite the demise of the old docks, the tugs and their skippers are still the workhorses of the river. I'm probably the oldest tug skipper on the River Thames at the moment, but we still go out and do a day's work. Oh, changes are up. Unbelievable. In fact, you could walk one end of the dock to the other end of the dock on barges. We could tell where we were by the smell on the River Thames. End. You knew it was a soap factory, you knew you were that edge. Then you come to Perfect Reach and you could smell all the oils. And then as you come round Thames Wall, up around there, you could smell the sewage. Right up until when you got to the pepper house or what, you knew it was a But well, not now, different today. All them days are gone. That's when men were made of iron and both were made of wood. Traditional tugs have now been joined by a fleet of fast catamarans. Thames clippers carry thousands of passengers every day. The boat is at 30 knots, so approximately 40 miles an hour, so probably one of the fastest modes of transport in London. The river bus service runs every 20 minutes to North Greenwich Pier, which is just a five minute walk from the Emirates Airline. Now coming into Greenwich, you should probably see the Royal Maritime Museum. It's a fantastic location and it's just an eight minute trip from North Greenwich. I think the river's got a key role to play for the regeneration of East London. We very much see the Thames as a tube line in the future. The Greenwich Peninsula is home to the O2, the world's most popular music and entertainment venue. The area is seen to undergo major redevelopment, creating a vibrant new district covering almost 200 acres. It's one of the largest regeneration projects in Europe. One of the great things about the peninsula is that it is actually an island site. You have a mile and a half of uninterrupted river frontage. Obviously the O2 attracts 15,000 people on a number of nights a year. I don't know it's uh, Hong Kong owned new development. It's one of the biggest regeneration schemes in the country, if not in Europe. You will probably realistically be looking at at least 20,000 people living here permanently, 20,000 people working here. So from a community point of view, it's going to offer something we think is going to be unique in the London landscape. Cutting through the peninsula, the Greenwich Meridian Line represents zero degrees of longitude. It divides the eastern and western hemispheres of the Earth and serves as the reference point for the world's clocks. Uh, it's also the inspiration for a new world pass sculpture trail, the Line, stretching more than three miles from the O2 to the Olympic Park. The Lion is a project that will be bringing contemporary art into the Greenwich Peninsula and the Royal Docks. There are two works that have been on the Greenwich Peninsula that were commissioned for the millennium. There's Richard Wilson's A Slice of Reality, which is a cross-section through a ship. And then there's Anthony Gormley's Quantum Cloud. It's made of thousands of steel rods, and you can see this elusive figure hidden within this cloud. And if people are wanting to continue the walk, there'll be work along the River Lee and the Canal, which is another extraordinary walk, an undiscovered gem. Thank you for flying the Emirates Airline. Exit here for the Emirates Aviation Experience, the Thames Clipper, the O2 and Transport Links. Oyster, Return and Single Ticket Holders, please alight here and exit to the left. It's just not an experience. For helping to see London from above.